G'day, I'm Paul. So when it comes to utes, buckies, pickup trucks, whatever you want to call them, size sometimes really does matter. And being the big old American ute, the new Jeep Gladiator kind of had to be one of the biggest at 5.6 metres long. It even has a cool name, Gladiator. Now this here is the mid-spec. It's called the Overland. It's priced at just over $75,000. This competes with things like the Ford Ranger Raptor, the Nissan Navara Warrior, and the Toyota Hilux Rugged X. Now today we're gonna to do a detailed review of this. If you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of the review, you can use the time codes up on the screen there, or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down and use the chapters below and if you haven't done so already just make sure you hit subscribe and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive cars with giant bumper bars okay let's talk exterior so you've got 10 exterior colors to choose from all but black and white are an additional 1035 dollars now on the design front when you look at this from side on it is absolutely gigantic so you've got that 5.6 odd meter length that's big. And I find it interesting. You've got some really fascinating design elements like this bumper bar that sticks out like that far. You have the seven slat Jeep grill up the front here, full LED headlights, which I think really rounded out. It kind of looks a little old school in terms of the design, but then they fit modern highlights like this. And they've even gone down the path, which I'll sort of go into a bit more depth later on some of the customizability and things that you can do with this. But to open the bonnet, for example, you've got latches here that you undo instead of having like a traditional bonnet release. So I think it's great to see just little highlights like that that make this feel very much like a Jeep and not just any other dual cab ute on the market. So yeah, let me know what you think about the design. I, I think it looks pretty good in person. I think it'll look much better when it's dirty. It's a little too clean at the moment. Um, we'll whip around to the side. Okay, so down here, you've got a set of 18 inch alloy wheels with that dark sort of graphite look to them. You have a set of highway terrain tires. I think if you're gonna be serious about your four wheel driving, you're gonna be swapping these out for all terrains pretty quickly. But you can just see with the design here that there's plenty of clearance. So if you do go for a bigger tire and wheel package, got plenty of room to work with especially with these um, plastic mounted edges on the side and on this side profile as well you can see just a lot of the exposed hinges and rivets so you got this for the bonnet you've got this here now that's for the windscreen so you can fold it down you can see these exposed hinges it kind of reminds me of the old defender now we may well i'm going to try to take off the roof the doors and fold the windscreen down later on in the video so Stay tuned for that. Uh, Jeep badge on the side, Gladiator there as well. Got these side steps that um, sort of sit nice and high, so you're not gonna be hitting those on rocks as you're driving off-road. If we come around to the rear, so before I show you the tray, uh, LED tail lights, again, another modern highlight that gives this a little bit of, um, I guess, tech cred amongst some of the competitors in this segment. Overland badge here, big proudly worn Jeep badge over here. Now this is interesting. So you've got your step to get into the car, but you've got a tailgate that comes down nice and easily. It also lifts fairly easily as well. So instead of just swinging down and slamming, that has a soft close to it. This has the lifestyle adventure package, which means you get this spray in bed liner, the cargo blind and a few other bits and pieces. But there are Easter eggs hidden all over this car. And one of them is just up here, 419, which is the area code for where this car is built. So it is good to see Jeep thinking about these little things. And then in the tray as well, you've got a light off to the side there. You've got hooks that you can tie things onto. This adjustable tray hook system as well so you can shift that around where you need it to and if you look down the bottom here we have an exposed recovery point as well now in terms of dimensions you have a load length of a little over 1500 millimeters a load width of a little over 1440 millimeters 1137 between the wheel arches and then a depth of 861 millimeters now the interesting thing here is that you only have around 500 kilos of payload so despite the size of this thing it actually really doesn't carry a great deal in the tray. It also comes down to towing. Instead of three and a half tons, like a lot of the dual cab utilities in this segment, you'll only be towing up to around 2,700 kilograms with a brake trailer. Okay, we are inside the Gladiator. Um, let's start with the key. So this is what it looks like. You have unlock, lock, remote start, then on the back, 
Jeep, and then it's a flip out key as well for the glove box. It's a proximity sensing key, so leave that in your pocket and then you have a stop start button here. Love the fact that this is rubber as well. And that kind of leads me on to the interior. You know, the, the Defender that we reviewed just recently, you can click up here to watch that review. It kind of just did everything right in terms of the interior. It had a lot of really cool materials and it just didn't look like any other sort of luxury SUV. And I think this is very much the same. You can see just around all these surfaces, everything is rubberized. Yes, this all does look nice and premium, but it still has that rugged feel to it. Even down to some of these surfaces, the textured rubber that they use just, just feels really cool. So they've ticked all the boxes here in terms of giving this that sort of military style look, which I think everyone is after. And then it's all fairly simply laid out. They've stuck with a manual lever for the four wheel drive controls, which I think is interesting. You can easily just go to a button system, but this kind of makes it feel a little more traditional. So now what about your touch points? So this is nice. And then on the door is nice as well. How soft are they? Well, we have our durometer. We've tested all the main surfaces in this car. If you want to see how it compares to other cars we've tested before, just scroll down and have a look at the link in the description below. Now, what about build quality? Let's see what it's like. Feels okay. Tiny bit wonky, but it's okay. You gotta keep in mind with this, and I'll probably mention this a few times throughout the video, but with everything that's removable as an engineer, I know how much has to go into structural rigidity. And there's only so much you can do when you effectively have a convertible that needs to be rigid enough to go off-road. So imagine like a Bentley Continental convertible that can also go off-road. That is the type of rigidity you need in this structure when you remove all the roofs and, and stuff like that. So this has to be flexible to accommodate that. That's my excuse anyway. Okay, let's talk infotainment. So you have a variety of infotainment systems available with Gladiator. This comes with a seven inch Uconnect infotainment system. If you wanna see a detailed review of this, click up here to watch one that we have recorded previously. Today, I'll just give you a brief overview. What I like about the Uconnect system is the high resolution screen. It just looks really sharp and they've done a good job in terms of the functionality too. As you flick through these menus, everything's nice and quick and the inbuilt satellite navigation is very easy to use as well. In terms of radio, you have AM, FM, DAB+, digital radio, and a nine speaker sound system. You also have smartphone mirroring built in with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like. Here it is here. Almost a full screen integration, but it keeps these shortcut buttons down the bottom. Now I'd show you Android Auto, but I forgot the Samsung, so I'm sorry about that. Another unique feature you have here are apps that are installed so you can see and this is a selection of them. But what I like here is if we go to off-road pages, when you are going off-road, you do have a display ahead of the driver, but you also have the ability to flick between different menus that show you what the car is doing off-road and what the full drive system's doing as well. Let's talk safety. So I'm gonna start by saying this has a very poor crash safety rating. So it's a three-star safety rating. It didn't perform well during the crash test and neither did the Wrangler that it's based on. So I think it is worth just keeping that in mind if you do wanna buy one of these that if safety is a top priority, it's probably worth having a look at something else. In terms of standard safety equipment, you have autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and then a reverse view camera with front and rear parking sensors. Let's have a look at the quality of the reverse view camera. That is fantastic. So that is really high resolution. It's probably one of the best reverse view cameras I've seen on a car. So it's good to see that they haven't skimped on that. Now, before we go on, I wanna ask you guys, how important is safety to you? Do you think that this being a three-star rated car affects your impression of it? Would you still buy one anyway? Do you really care what your off-road focused SUV is actually like in terms of safety? I'm keen to get your thoughts, so let me know down there. Okay, let's talk about practicality and we'll start with connectivity. So Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, they're both wired, so you'll need a cable for that. But if we get rid of that, you can see there's a little enclosure here for your media ports. You have auxiliary, a USB-C port, a USB-A port, a 12 volt outlet, and then if you look inside the glove box here, you have another USB port. This one also has that lifestyle package that I mentioned earlier that comes with these auxiliaries. Now with these, you can hook these up to different things like lights or fridge or whatever you want. That also has a 240 amp alternator to service those components, but keep in mind that you'll need a second battery if you wanna run those things when the car's off, because you don't wanna run the risk of draining your car's battery when you do have some of these items running. Now, while you might go mudding on the weekend, you probably drink small lattes on weekdays is your coffee cup going to fit in 
No dramas there. This one also has gripped tabs on the sides so when you put a bigger bottle in, that's gonna stay in nicely. Now the doors are interesting because there isn't really a bottle holder, but there is a net that you can slide your bottle into. Then in terms of the center console, you have two tiers, a top tier that's gripped and also there for keys and bits and pieces. And then a second tier that's nice and deep. I'll show you what that looks like with the bottle in there. That closes. We have glove box over here. Does the water bottle fit in? Yes, well, no, actually it doesn't. Uh, you also have storage up the top here for odds and ends. And then finally, a phone holder over here, and then a little storage nook just down here. Okay, let's talk about comfort. What features have you got here? So you have heated seats, heated steering wheel, you have dual zone automatic climate control. In terms of the seats themselves, they're, they're comfy. They have full manual adjustment, but the thing I find really bizarre, you look at this from the outside and it looks absolutely huge, but you get inside and it is so cramped in here. Like I literally just feel like I'm wedged into here the center tunnel eats into all your space, so there's nowhere to really rest your feet. It is quite surprising how little room there is. So, um, look, you do get used to it when you're driving, but it is um, just something I wasn't expecting. The steering wheel itself is nice to hold, and then all of your critical controls are easy to reach. Okay, now back seat. Before we get stuck into this, I want to show you some of the cool features here. So you have under seat storage, and it's also lockable as well. So that means you can open this up, both sides come up, means you can pop your little bits and pieces in there. You have a jack located there as well. If we drop this, we have storage behind here too, but you also have a removable Bluetooth speaker. So that means you can pull that out and use that to play your music while you're out camping and mudding. Uh, on top of that, you also have three top tether points along the back there. Let's see how much room there is in here. Grab that handle and hop in. Okay, so I did notice up the front there, and I didn't mention this earlier, but all your window controls are in the center. So you put the windows up and down from that location. In terms of room here, there's actually a surprising amount of room. I've got a decent amount of knee room, loads and loads of toe room. Headroom is really good as well. You can see the speakers built into the roof section there. That feels plenty wide enough. Let's have a look here. Is there a center armrest? Yes, I think there is. There it is there. Pop our drinks in there. That has rubber tabs as well, so they won't be going anywhere. And then same story as the front. You have little nets to hold your drinks in. You have rear air vents there as well, but I can't see any USB ports down here. And you've also got map pockets there. You've also got two isofix points on the outboard seats and this handy rear window. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. What is the Gladiator like to drive? And we'll start with the engine. So it's a 3.6 litre naturally aspirated petrol V6. It makes 209 kilowatts of power and 347 newton metres of torque. So it doesn't sound like much because it's not supercharged or turbocharged, but it's enough to keep it moving. And that's all mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. Now, how does all that feel? Well, look, it's actually not too bad. These V6s from Jeep are generally pretty perky and they get up and moving. They do like to rev though, so when you get stuck into it, they make a fair old racket and then they sort of pick up and move. So it doesn't feel slow by any means, it's just more leisurely than quick. And the gearbox itself is pretty good as well. You've got enough torque there to lean on the torque band and then it'll drop back through gears when it needs to, but it's very fuss free, it doesn't really sort of make anything too complicated. Let's talk fuel economy. So Jeep claims 11.2 litres per 100 Ks. We'll jump down and see what we're sitting on at the moment. 16.1, <laughs> not even close. Jeep doesn't offer a zero to 100 time for the Gladiator, but we've put it up against our stopwatch. Let's see how it went. Now notice while we're driving along here, I don't know if you can hear this, but there's a fair bit of rattling going on at the back there. You'll see shortly that uh, most of these panels come off. And as a result of that, when you put it all back together, if it's not done perfectly, you'll have a little bit that's loose that sort of flaps about and makes a bit of noise, which can get a little bit annoying. Let's talk about rides. So you have front and rear live axles, and at the rear you have a five link coil spring setup with a pan hard rod. Look, it's interesting. Um, it's fairly ponderous. So when you're driving along and hitting bumps, it sort of just moves around all over the place. It kind of just feels like a Wrangler to drive, which I think if you've driven a Wrangler, you'll know what I mean. This kind of isn't helped by the fact that the steering is incredibly vague. 
there is just literally nothing going on about centre. It's a hydraulically assisted steering rack, so no E-Pass electric uh, steering setup here. It's not amazing in terms of the feel that you get behind the wheel, and if you get something like a crosswind or something, it kind of just moves the car about, and you need to overcorrect with the steering uh, to really sort of get it back into line. But look, I don't know, you come to expect something like this because this is a master off-road. So to get the wheel articulation that they get out of this and to, to make it as good as it is off-road, you have to make massive compromises to the on-road performance. So it's kind of the price that you pay to have something that can tow, that can sort of haul a load, that can go off-road. You know, you have to make compromises somewhere and I think it's the suspension where they've kind of compromised in terms of body control. Okay, let's talk handling. So I know it's not a sports car, but we're going to assess the handling. Um, it's interesting. It has a fair bit of body roll. Uh, once you load it up, it, it sort of you can feel something, but you know, it's not very confidence-inspiring. We don't have all-terrain tyres here, but there is still a fair bit of uh, road noise that comes into the cabin. It's a bit of wind noise as well. So it's not a super quiet place to be seated, but you know, it's not terrible in the in that same vein. Okay, turning circle time. This is where I've got some bad news for you. 13.6 meters. That is a huge turning circle. So if you try and do a U-turn, you'll hit those lock stops and then you'll be doing three point turns all the time. Now, what about visibility? Um, look, it's, it's not too bad. So the bonnet sits really high, so you can see where it drops down. But you've got to remember that front section that sticks out heaps. You can't really account for it there, so luckily you do get parking sensors that help with that. And you need those when you're driving in and around the city too, because it is such a whopper of a car. Um, you've got blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. The wing mirror is not massive. I would have thought something a little bit bigger would be suitable for this. Uh, and visibility out the rear isn't fantastic either, but you can open that middle window to get you seeing out a little bit more, and then you can take all of this stuff off if you just don't want any windows in your way. Now this is the part where we normally do a little bit of light off-roading and it's also where I promised you that I would try and remove the doors, fold the windscreen down and get the roof off so that we can see what that looks like. So um, this is going to be a time lapse of that hopefully happening and I'm going to use my colleague Scott to help me with some of the heavy bits. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so this is something a little bit different. Um, yeah, we're just gonna do a little bit of light off-roading here uh, with no doors, roof, etc. Um, in terms of the off-road equipment, this is the base model. So you don't really get some of the fancy stuff that you get in the upper spec version. So no Fox shocks, you don't have disconnecting sway bars, you don't have differential locks or anything like that. So it's a fairly straightforward setup. You have four wheel drive high range, you have two wheel drive high range, you also have four wheel drive low range. And what we're gonna do today is just go up our logs and down our rocks just to see how it fares. You have 40.7 degrees of approach angle, which is pretty insane and 25.1 degrees of departure angle. And then you have 249 millimetres of ground clearance and a little under 800 millimetres of weighting depth. Now, if none of that makes any sense to you, click up here to watch our four-wheel drive controls explained video. But let's give this a shot. I'm gonna slot that down into four high. And we're gonna do a climb up our logs here. Now, the cool thing is I'm gonna be able to watch literally out the door here to see what our tyres are doing. Hopefully I won't get any rocks in my eyes. No drums there at all, parking sensors are off. It's actually a really cool perspective because normally you're sitting in here and not able to see anything, but we can literally see out the door there. Fantastic. This is literally walking up here. Um, no dramas whatsoever. So let's go down our rocks. Okay, so this has recently been regraded and there's a pretty sharp rock about halfway down. I'll be keen to see whether this has sufficient clearance there. Yeah, no dramas. No dramas at all. And it is incredibly comfortable down here too. I'm really not finding any issues with it being uncomfortable. So I'm pretty sure there's a, yeah, there's a hill descent control here as well. Um, no, okay, so you're gonna be in low range. So we'll just walk down here normally. I won't bother with that. Yeah, this is a piece of cake. This is what the Gladiator's all about, right? Yeah, okay, it's not the most comfortable on-road, but you can take the doors off and drive off-road. I mean, what else more could you possibly want? 
Okay, so the Jeep Gladiator. I don't normally get a big smile like this on my face when I test cars, but this has just been so much fun. Look, I understand the safety rating isn't very good and you know I, I'm a big advocate for safety, but at the end of the day, I mean, this is a car that you can take the doors off, you can take the roof off. It's made for fun and getting away. So if you look at the price point, this is pretty competitive when you look at the features and the way that it can drive off-road. If you get yourself a, a Ranger Raptor, which is roughly around the same price, I mean, you can't do any of this stuff with it. Yes, it is a safer vehicle, but at the end of the day, Jeep is known for its off-road credentials and just being able to do cool things like this. So let me know in the comments section, did you buy a Jeep Gladiator? What's it like? Are you enjoying it? Are there any downsides? And let me know your thoughts on all the safety stuff as well. I'm really keen to get everyone's feedback. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you share it and like it. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe and press the bell icon as well. But until next time, take it easy.